Hello and welcome to another brand new edition of Colors of India, our weekly show where we get you a roundup of some important cultural events in the week gone by. I'm Tina Jha. Let's begin the program today with glimpses of events we've covered for you during the past week. First up on the show this week, a celebration of the spirit of tribal crafts, culture and commerce. Followed by a celebration of modern day art. And then a weekly focus on regional films. Let's take you first today to the Delhi Adi Mahotsav. Organized at Dilli Hart INA, the inaugural ceremony of the festival was graced by Home Minister Amit Shah. The festival featured exhibition come sale of tribal handicrafts, art, paintings, fabric, jewellery and much more. More than 1,000 tribal artisans and artists from across India participated in the festival. My colleague Vandana takes us through the fortnight-long National Tribal Festival. Like every year, Adi Mahasav marked its return at Dilli Hart INA. This time, the theme of the festival was a celebration of the spirit of tribal crafts, culture and commerce. The 15-day fest featured exhibition come sale of tribal handicrafts, art, jewellery, fabric and much more through over 200 stalls. Nearly 1,000 tribal artisans and artists from 27 states got together to promote India's tribal economy and culture at Adi Mahutsav this year. A joint initiative of the Ministry of Tribal Affairs, Government of India and Tribal Cooperative Marketing Development Federation of India Limited, the fortnight-long festival was a perfect merge of different tribal communities of the country. witnessed a large number of tribal artisans participating and showcasing their masterpieces. The tribes constitute over 8% of the country's population and this is a very significant number as it corresponds to more than 10 crore Indians. The Adi Mahotsav stresses on the development of tribes as an important component for the inclusive development of the nation. Decorated stalls offering tribal merchandise like tribal jewellery, clothing, handicrafts and painting demonstrations were some of the main attractions at the festival. हम लोग ये डीसी एंडी क्राफ्ट गवर्नमेंट तरफ से ये ट्राइपेड का तरफ से हमने ट्राइनिंग करके हमने इस तरीका से बनाने का सीख लिया हम लोग इसका नक्शा बनाते हैं पहले उसके बाद में सैंपल बनाते हैं उसके बाद पूरा सक्सेसफुल हो जाता है उसको सब बनाने का उसके बाद में हमने पीस बाहर निकालते हैं उसके बाद फिर हम लोग बेचने के लिए यहाँ लेके आ जाते हैं ये ब्रास मेटल का डोकरा क्राफ्ट है जो कि बहुत फेमस आर्ट क्राफ्ट है और इसका जो बनाने का प्रोसेस है ये लंबा होता है इसमें पहले ये वैक्स का डिज़ाइन बनाते हैं फिर उसके बाद तीन टाइप से मिट्टी छपाई करते हैं उसके बाद क्या होता है कि आ, इसको धूप में सुखा के फिर इसको आ, पीतल जो मार्केट से लाते हैं जो कच्चा पीतल खरीद के लाते हैं उसको ला के फिर इसको पिघला के फिर इसमें पोरिंग करते हैं देन इसके बाद पॉलिशिंग होता है Patachitra has derived its name from Sanskrit word pat, which refers to cloth, and chitra, which means picture. The traditional painting is best known for its intricate details, as well as mythological narratives and folk tales inscribed in it. All colors used in Patachitra are natural colors. This is tribal artist Rameshwar Munda. 
He learned photo theatre art at a very young age and has been painting since then. For his outstanding contribution in taking Pattachitra to new heights, he received the National Award in the year 2002. Not just on cloth, Rameshwar Stoll had also Pattachitra paintings done on dried palm leaves and stitched up together to look like a canvas. Odisha ka patta chitra kehte hain aur palm leaf painting kehte hain jo fabric color use karte hain kapda to fabric color use karte hain lekin patta chitra hai to hamara natural color hota hai tad patre iron ladle se carving karte hain carving ke baad hum lamp black ismal karte hain iska par lagane se jo carving karte hain iske andar hi chala jaye to baki sab pani se dhone se saaf ho jata hai ni hai doli sori le doli ya mumbai cha kinari मर दिन गोली न हनलन गोली न चल जाऊ बाजारी द टू वीक लॉन्ग फेस्टिवल आल्सो एग्जिबिटेड कल्चरल परफॉर्मेंस मर दिन गोली न हनलन गोली न चल जाऊ बाजारी ओ चल मेरी पाठणी है मेरे जानो छुड़पुरा चुंग मेरी गाठोणी है मेरे जानो छुड़पुरा ओ बजमोणो का Cultural troops from different states enthralled everyone with their mesmerizing performances, showcasing the rich tribal cultural diversity of India. Bidru bina mani le so na thiga chud pura. Bidru bina mani le so na thiga. Enthusiastic spectators and visitors were seen enjoying soaking up in the tribal culture. It indeed was a cherishable experience for the Delhiites. The concept of organizing Adi Mahotsav in major cities has proved to be a boon for tribal artisans by eliminating the middleman and also providing direct access to large markets, otherwise impossible to reach for them. A total of 26 such festivals have been planned across India, of which eight have already been held in different cities, providing the perfect platform to these tribal artisans to showcase and also sell their products, at the same time also promote their tribal cultural diversity. We hope you like this celebration of tribal arts and culture. So with that, time for a short break here on the program. Some more interesting events lined up for you on the other side of this quick breather. Do stay with us. When we return, we'll take you to an art fair that celebrates the spirit of creativity and innovation. Welcome back after the break. Let's now take you to the India Art Festival, which returned with its fifth edition this year. The four-day event displayed at least 4,500 works brought by 30 galleries from across the country. Among them were works by at least 200 master and established artists from different parts of the country. The fifth edition of India Art Festival was unveiled at Thyagrad Stadium in the national capital recently. Founded in 2011 by the publishers of the Indian Contemporary Art Journal, the Art Festival is held annually in Delhi and Mumbai. Starting next year, the festival is also expanding its base down south to Bengaluru. What made this edition of the festival so special was the participation of around 450 artists represented by 30 galleries as well as independent artists presenting as many as 4,500 artworks displayed through 124 booths. The 
इंडिया आर्ट फेस्टिवल एक समकालीन कला महोत्सव है ये 2011 से मुंबई में शुरू हुआ था और पिछले पाँच साल से हम दिल्ली में भी ये करते आ रहे हैं तो हर साल ये मुंबई दिल्ली और इस साल से बेंगलोर में होता है इंडिया आर्ट फेस्टिवल का मुख्य उद्देश्य तो यही है कि हमारे देश में जो कला दीर्घाए है आर्ट गैलरीज है उनकी संख्या काफ़ी कम है पब्लिक गैलरीज है जैसा यहाँ ललित कला अकेडमी है मुंबई में जहांगीर आर्ट गैलरी है बेंगलोर में चित्रकला परिषद है लेकिन आर्टिस्ट की संख्या इतनी बड़ी है कि आर्टिस्ट जो होते हैं चित्रकार शिल्पकार उनको अपना अपनी कला दिखाने के लिए पेंटिंग्स दिखाने के लिए प्लेटफॉर्म जल्दी नहीं मिलता है तो दस साल पहले हमने ये मुंबई में शुरू किया था ताकि यहाँ आर्टिस्ट चित्रकार शिल्पकार और कला आर्ट गैलरीज आए और अपनी कला को दिखाए The India Art Festival is also popular among art lovers and art collectors for its diverse visual art products from the rural parts of India along with metro bred artists. Not just for art lovers, the art fair also helps galleries to build a bond with the art dealers, collectors and buyers. In this 4-day mega art fair at Mumbai and New Delhi Galleries and artists from rural and urban parts of the country displayed all kinds of artworks including paintings, sculptures, photographs, original prints, serigraphs and installations. Actually, abhi tak maine kaam paintings mein dekha hai ki two dimensionally kaam hota hai. Paintings mein two dimensions se dekha jata hai. But now मेरा सोचना ऐसा है कि painting ko bhi three dimensionally hum work out kar sakte hain. So that's why I just using from cube और बेसिक uh, ऐसा है कि क्यूब हर चीज़ की शुरुआत होती है स्क्वायर दैन ऑल डॉट्स दैन ऑल जोमेटिकल शेप्स फिर इससे काफ़ी सारी चीज़ें जैसे क्यूब मैंने यूज़ किया इंडिकेट फॉर्म ऑफ नॉलेज नॉलेज एंड यू जस्ट नॉट फॉर अपने तक रखना है उसे स्प्रेड भी करना है लोगों तक एट दी आर्ट फेयर विजिटर्स ऑल्सो विटनेस ऑलमोस्ट एवरी फॉर्म ऑफ आर्ट एंड रिफ्रेशिंग क्रिएटिविटी that satiated almost all kinds of visual tastes like seascapes landscapes cityscapes rural and urban scenarios figurative still life and abstracts highly realistic religious and spiritual artworks and much more the art fair provided an opportunity to artists to expose their talents and art to different kinds of audiences and also meet their potential markets with a wide range of paintings sculptures and art installations the fest was a treat for art enthusiasts the india art festival not just gives new artists an opportunity to gain exposure but also serves as a one stop art shop for the art buyers and the art collectors the festival has hosted 10 editions in mumbai so far marked its fifth year in delhi and will now be expanding to bengaluru next year on that note time for another quick break in the program but there's still more coming up ahead don't go anywhere on the other side of the break we'll talk about regional films Welcome back once again. It's time now for our special segment on Indian cinema where we celebrate its history and diversity. In our film segment this week We are once again being joined by film critic Abdul Ghani. Mr Ghani, pleasure having you on the show yet again. So which are the films you are going to brief us about today? Thank you Tina for having me in the show. Our viewers today we are going to review two films that were released in the last few weeks from Assam. One is Amis The Ravening by Bhaskar Hazarika and another one is Jalai The Seed by Rajni Basumatari which is in Bodo language. Uh, these two films are very interesting and of course from uh, different genres. Uh, first we are going to review Amis by Bhaskar Hazarika. Uh, Bhaskar has already made his presence felt with his first feature film Kotanodi which uh, brought him national award in 2016. Amis is about two lovers. One is a 
Mary Dorman in her late 30s and another one is a young PhD student in his 20s and how they are connected through their common interest of eating meats uh, before the things take an ugly turn. Amis was uh, premiered at the Tribeca International Film Festival earlier this year and of course it has traveled a number of festivals winning a lot of awards as well. <laughs> Bhaskar seems to have his weaknesses towards the dark theme. In fact, uh, Anurag Kashyap was so overwhelmed by this film and he came forward to present the film in theatres which was released on November 22nd across Assam and in some parts of the country. Nirmali, played by Lima Das, a middle-aged doctor and a mother of a kid who runs her own clinic and lives alone in Guwahati, as her husband often stays away for his work. She happens to meet Suman, played by Arkhadi Barua, a PhD student, who is doing research on meat-eating habits of Northeast India. Their common interest of eating meat brings them closer and closer. In the process, Suman helps Nirmali eat various types of meat before things take an unanticipated turn. <laughs> Kudos to the director for making the first time actors doing their job so naturally. Faskar also takes you in a territory where Indian film has never dared to step in. Amis is an unusual brilliant film but it's not for the faint hearted. It's a must watch or even twice. The next one is Jalei the Seed by Rajini Basumatari. It's a different kind of film. The film depicts the trauma of a family that crumbles when the insurgency was at its peak in Assam and Northeast India. <laughs> Uh, it tells a story of a mother and her journey to bring home her last offspring. Uh, Rajni Basumatari, uh, who played Mary Kam's mother in her biopic, has herself witnessed the horrific incidents of insurgency and counterinsurgency in um, Assam in 1990s. <laughs> Rajni plays the protagonist and whose husband was killed mistakenly during a counter-insurgency operation and later her son was also killed and finally her journey to find her grandchild lands her in Thailand. Hello? You are Bunsri? Yes. Please come to India. I want to see you. Zani fai ko som fara bara jagan. The film has also portrayed the horror of the controversial Armed Forces Special Power Act, which gives the security forces sweeping power to arrest any individual on the basis of suspicion. <laughs> uh, bearing herself, most of the actors are non professionals and some of them are victims of the horrific incidents 
but they have done their part perfectly. Though there are some technical snacks, it's an honest attempt to tell an important story which has affected many lives in Northeast. I recommend Jale for a watch. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Abdul Ghani, for reviewing these films for us and our viewers. So if you are a movie buff looking for some good content, you could explore these films recommended by our film critic. So that's all from us in this special segment on cinema. Next week, we'll talk about some other recently released regional films. For the moment, let's shift focus to the culture calendar of the week. An evening of Indian music, classical and beyond, will be held at Dr. B. R. Ambedkar Bhavan, Bengaluru, 7 p.m. on 4 December. A piano concert by Florian Filmeyer is scheduled to take place at the Stein Auditorium, India Habitat Centre, Lodi Road in Delhi, 7 p.m. on 3rd December. A dance drama festival, Uttaran, will be held at Gyan Manch, Abhinav Bharati High School, Pretoria Street, 6.30 p.m. on 2nd December. And a play, Europeans Media, will be staged at G5A Foundation for Contemporary Culture, Mahalakshmi West in Mumbai, 8 p.m. on 7 December. So with that, it's time for me to wrap up this edition of Colors of India. We'll be back same time next week with more cultural updates. You can also watch our program online on YouTube and Twitter.